name of the living God, who is creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. Before we get real serious, I want to give you an update on our puppies. For those who don't know it, um, my wife and I are raising puppies, Labs, and um, the second litter is four black and two two blonde and uh, four girls and two boys, and they're doing great. Uh, they're walking and talking, sometimes louder than we want them to, uh, but they're seeing and they're hearing, and they're just wonderful, and they are a rejoicing of God's creation, a rejoicing of God's creation. So, in the spirit of rejoicing, let's enter into where we are as a, as a parish family, where our nation is where God is, where faith is. Let me remind you about something that I'm sure you're familiar with, and that is that uh, we Episcopalians are what's called creedal and not doctrinal. That means that, uh, that we focus on the creeds, the specific creeds, not seen in apostles. We focus on the traditions of the church, not so much on being very specific in doctrine about how we believe this or that part of the creed, we're not doctrinal in that way, you must believe this. But we take very seriously that framework of creeds and scripture. And, and it really, within that strong structure and framework, there is a freedom for each one of us as individuals to say, well, well, this is what I think. I looked at it very carefully, and this is what I think, and this is what I believe. And sometimes we even change our mind. And uh, that's our approach. That's our approach to the faith. Well, you're familiar with the baptismal covenant. You said it last. You said it last week at the baptism. And in a way, the baptismal covenant is sort of a creed, not really a creed, but it is a guideline. It's sort of a rule of life, um, shaped in the form of questions, not statements, questions, which demand an answer, an answer from us as faithful Christians after we take everything into consideration, the community in which we worship, um, scripture and our background and our ability to learn and grow and stretch. Um, so I would, like to, I would like to ask you some of these questions which I've amended slightly today. And you know what the response is, I will with God's help. Which designates, it indicates that this is an individual promise to do this with God's help, said in the context of this community, of this worshiping community. So are you game? Good. Will you, as an American citizen and a faithful Christian, seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will. Will you, as an American citizen, and a faithful Christian, strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being. I will, God. Will you, as an American <coughs> citizen and a faithful Christian, work for healing in our nation? I will, God. So, do any of you have answers to those questions right now? They're tough, aren't they? They're deep. They're complicated, but there they are. And you said, I will with God's help. Of course, I added that, la that last one because of where we are as a nation. The heart of our nation is broken. The heart of our nation is broken right down the middle. I just, I can't believe it. I didn't really see that. I don't think many, many of us saw it. Our heart, the heart of our nation is broken probably because the hearts of so many Americans are broken, have been broken, are broken, were broken. And again, maybe, maybe we didn't see that. Maybe we've turned a blind eye to the brokenness that does exist in our community. And for some of us, our hearts are broken because our dreams of America were shattered on election day. For some of us, our hearts
hearts are broken because we feel left behind and forgotten by our country. For some of us, our hearts are broken because as hard as we try, we cannot put food on the table. We cannot make a living. We cannot provide for our families. For some of us, our hearts are broken because our retirement funds are being depleted and we don't know what's going to happen after the money's gone. For some of us, our hearts are broken because we feel rejected by the nation we love. For some of us, our hearts are broken because we cannot find safety and security in this nation. Lots of different reasons for lots of different people. But it, it, it does point out, I think, that a lot of people are living in fear and brokenness. Right now, it's probably reached ahead right now. Um, we know that our nation's not going to fail anything like that. But there is a brokenness deep in the heart of us American citizens and faithful Christians. Well, here's the good news. Hearts broken apart, hearts that are shattered, can lead to death or depression, right? Heart attack. But hearts broken open, not shattered, broken open, actually provide more room for God to move in. And even for the people who care for us to move into that space. And that's what the good news is. If only we could see the benefit, the benefit of the brokenness we feel in this country and among Christians, see the benefit which God offers to us at this critical time, who knows what might happen? Because we know that throughout our journey, communal and individual, God is with us. Jesus is walking with us. About 15 years ago, I went on a sabbatical for um, the, the specific purpose to get more in contact with God's creation and with the people who were in a speci specific part of God's creation, people who resided in that part. So what I did is I spent, I spent two weeks um, in the city, in an urban, I mean New York City, and then I reflected on two weeks. I spent two weeks in a desert on the Navajo Reservation in the Four Corners area and came back and reflected on that. Spent two weeks on a river, the Potomac, and others learning about kayaking and getting into that and reflected on that. And then I spent two weeks on a mountain. My son was a worker and a mountain climber in Peru. And I went down to, to Peru and went to Machu Picchu, a very sacred place. And what I had done in every place that I went during that sabbatical on my daily prayers in the morning, I'd sit down on the ground, on the earth, and feel that dirt and make a circle around me with my finger. So it's like that, sort of setting off that sacred space. And to, to be open, the, the prayers weren't specific words, it was more an openness, trying to provide an openness for God to come into my life. And, and one day, that day, that single day that I was on Machu Picchu, I was there on the mountain, there were tourists walking around and Peruvians, but I was off to the side a little bit, it was a private space, and I looked for a rock, every place I went I found a rock, I've got a big bucket of rocks that I brought home for those, <laughs> those four miles, but I, I found a rock about the size of my fist, I picked it up, and it was interesting because it had a crack in it, I mean it was a solid rock, it felt like it, but it had a crack in it, and as I held it, as I held it, I moved my hands a little bit and it, and it cracked open. I mean, the crack went all the way through, but it, it didn't appear like that. And as soon as, it, as soon as it just separated, I said, I mean, to myself, it just sort of came to me, rock cracked open. I mean, sort of a weird thing. It's like the name of a Native American or something. I mean, rock cracked open. What's your name? Rock cracked open. But I said it several times, and you know what? 
it really touched my heart. It was really sort of a, it was a mystical, spiritual moment for me. Because in some ways, I really did feel God closer. I really did feel closer to that earth. I really did feel closer to the tourists and Peruvians for walk, walking around. There was something about that breaking apart, but it wasn't shattered. It was just breaking, and there was space there in between. That was a learning for me. And, you know, it's really nothing new. Because throughout the tradition of our faith, throughout the tradition of humanity, that's what we know happens. Is that if, if we encounter, when we encounter challenge and conflict to a deep degree that really gets our attention, often we feel the misery of that. And there's something inside that sort of has to give. And if our heart cracks open, God does step in to bring healing in the form of the presence of Jesus, the healing spirit, the healing presence of the Creator. And then we are empowered to re-engage with the community, with the people around us, feeling fuller, more connected to the God in whom we believe, and maybe more ready to, to make a change that that community needs. We heard this in the Isaiah reading. People of Israel were not happy. Their hearts were broken. They had been taken into exile. They were not in their home. And yet God said to them, I'm going to create a new heavens and a new earth. And you're coming back to Jerusalem, a joy. In the second reading, when Paul was speaking to the, to the church in Thessalonica, um, things weren't going well. You know, people weren't behaving. I mean, they weren't caring to, you know, people... If you were a leader of that church, you know, you'd be worried because people weren't carrying their load. And, and yet, and yet, the message ultimately was, uh, do not be weary about doing the right thing. And, and, and what's, what's a piece of that message is, I'm with you. God is saying, I am with you. Jesus is with them. And then, what about that gospel? Such a scary gospel after all that we've been through this week, this past week. Nation against nation. Father against son. Put to death. Hard, hard language. I mean, for those early believers in Jesus Christ to hear that message in those early formations of a community that would come to be church, you know their hearts were broken. Uh, you know, wait a minute, I'm not up for that kind of conflict. Don't tell me that, God. And yet, and yet, the message was, through your perseverance, your souls will be healed. Today we are remembering, as Ben said, and heritage, a heritage of our faith, that is the Celtic Church, which was basically the 6th and 7th centuries in Britain. And, and in these strong, these strong hymns we sing, these long and strong hymns we sing, <laughs> I know it was a long hymn, but I love it. Don't you love it? I mean, it's all about being committed. It's all about being committed. And the thing about Celtic Christianity is they really believe in the relationship of God, in the Trinity. I mean, they talk a lot about the Trinity. The Trinity. Not just Jesus, but the Trinity. And that is the relationships within God and the relationships with each other. The, the Celtic monks during those two centuries, the way that they, the, the way that they functioned as evangelists is that they didn't go out and say, let me teach you how to do this and that and then, and then you can be baptized and you can be a Christian. Instead, they focused on relationships with the pagans. They went out in the in the mountains around and just learned their language and learned how to communicate with them and invited them into the community. It was a relational thing. And then the third thing that the Celtics did was they always found God in nature. And, and that's in this music as well. So those are some things that we can think about during our time of challenge and conflict. That's another thing that we um, I've been talking about a book that I'm rereading. It's by Parker Palmer. He's a Quaker. He's 
a thinker, he's a pe person of faith, and he wrote a book in 2011 called uh, Healing the Heart of Democracy. Healing the Heart of Democracy. I want you to get that book and read it. It was written in before the 2012 election, but boy, did it ever apply to us right now because we're looking for ways. All of us should be looking for ways to heal our democracy. He talks about the strength of democracy, not taking sides or anything like that. But that the strength of democracy is that we can hold in tension our differences, we can stick it out to the end, we can make decisions for the common good, and we can celebrate the depth of our community. There are things that we can do as citizens, but mainly as faithful Christians, to march forward in this challenging time of our lives. May we persevere as God has called us. May we always seek to find the joy of Jesus all around us and the rejoicing of creation in that which surrounds us. For God is with us. Whether we are celebrating a certain victory or depressed about a certain God is with us and encouraging again and again to do what is for the common good and to be instruments of peace 